transportation side, everyone thinks of ferries, Romeo, just sort of the transportation side. And if you've traveled a lot internationally, whether you've been you know, in Hong Kong or Abidjan or Oslo or other cities, you know, you just sort of take it for granted. Some cities have it, some, some don't. You know, most people don't think of what is a driver, what are the economics behind it, what is the impact on the local economy with or without them. And um, if you have one and it disappears, it has a big impact, but if you don't have one or it's been years, you move into a neighborhood that you know, a generation ago or two generations ago had ferries, um, you don't even think that, wow, how different could this be and what would it mean to, to my neighborhood um, you know, uh, to, uh, to have it. So we certainly have a great mix of people here to cover that wide spectrum as well as uh, you know, the, the, some of the, the narrower details of ferry services in, in this harbor. Um, I think I'd like to start uh, uh, with Eric, just introductions. Eric uh, Hall is, uh, uh, we'll see where, where you guys do at night, the ladies do at night, uh, in that uh, for those who all recognize another head soon as his name, but that means I guess you've been hanging out in sports bars in Williamsburg. He certainly had the most successful one there, Red Star. Um, he's been rated that by in, uh, in uh, Time Out New York, New York Magazine and Daily News, to mention a few sources, and uh, certainly an advocate for water, waterfront revitalization. Uh, you know, we've seen where that has been to Greenport, uh, Greenpoint neighborhood, and uh, Eric is the uh, former co-chair of the Green, uh, Greenpoint Alliance. Um, uh, next, uh, like uh, for those who don't know uh, Jeff, um, Jeff Levine, uh, with chairman of Douglaston Development, uh, certainly well-known uh, developers and builders in uh, in New York. Um, uh, Jeff uh, distinguished has been to many awards. Uh, certainly, the Met Council Builder, um, uh, Housing Council uh, Conference Developer of the Year, um, and uh, Ernst and uh, Ernst and Young Entrepreneur Award, which certainly is appropriate to a lot of the issues that we're going to be touching touching on here. Um, He's certainly proud of his New York roots, uh, being a uh, uh, being graduated from uh, City University. Um, next, we have uh, uh, sorry, I've got the Arthur. Now we have uh, uh, Michael. Um, also, uh, interesting uh, mix for the panel. Michael is uh, sorry is the, um, the co-owner of the Brooklyn Roasting Company. Uh, I think. Uh, at J, J Street, I think we talked to when we were talking as a panel, started with just a few a few employees and has built that up to, uh, what, about 30, 30 plus employees? Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, the impact that uh, ferry, the lack of ferry service or, uh, and the what ferry service has meant to his business right on the uh, Brooklyn waterfront. Uh, so, um, you know, that's going to add another interesting angle. And then Arthur Imperator, for those of you who did not use one of his ferries coming over here, shame on you. Uh, and I'm sure he will do a good job of, uh, of convincing you of the uh, necessity. Um, Arthur certainly has spent a long time uh, as an advocate for ferry service in the harbor, was uh, very involved, obviously, right after 9-11. And uh, his company did a fantastic job of demonstrating uh, the value of uh, other aspects uh, of having a robust ferry service in, in, in the harbor. Um, and certainly from an economic development point, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, he measures up with Jeff, but certainly uh, uh, has the uh, experience on the real estate side with the nexus uh, as well between uh, ferry service and the economic development that goes with that. Um, so with that, I think, uh, Arthur, you're, you're first up and you have a, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, PowerPoint or a presentation, uh, yeah, work off. Yeah, I, I have some slides. I, you got to bear with me. I don't generally use a laptop. I use a tablet, but uh, so I'm a little hand-handed with the laptop. But I'll do my best. Um, yeah, well, I, well, I mean, since this panel is about economic development, I want to tell the story of, uh, of Port Imperial, which is the development site across the river that my family is partner in, uh, and that my father purchased uh, from the Penn Central Railroad. Uh, bankruptcy in the early, 19, early 1980s. Um, you can see it, uh, unfortunately it's not highlighted, but it's approximately uh, from this uh, boundary line here, which is the northern boundary of the town of West New York, all the way south to here, which uh, at the Baldwin Avenue intersection, which leads to the Lincoln Tunnel entrance. It's approximately two miles, uh, about 360 acres. It was all one site. You could never assemble a site this large. Uh, it was one railroad yard. Historically, uh, in 1883, William Vanderbilt, the son of Cornelius Vanderbilt, purchased this 
uh, and incorporated it into the uh, New York Central Railroad system, which had its flagship terminal at Grand Central Station, which obviously still functions. Uh, the West Shore Railroad was meant to compete with the Pennsylvania Railroad, which had, of course, a competing terminal at uh, West 33rd Street, and had, unlike the New York Central, a tunnel under the river, which is now used today by Amtrak and New Jersey Transit trains. So the history of ferry service is very much tied up with infrastructure and real estate from the very beginning. Um, in fact, the old railroad ferry network in New York Harbor, I'm going to try and pull it up for you, I have to go onto Facebook. I'm, I'm, this is not an advertisement for the IPO. Um, in fact, uh, is it? Wait 60 days and buy it at $20 a share. That's, that's what I think. Um, but let me see if I can do this. Uh, again, I apologize for not having slides, but um, um, okay. Jeez, uh, uh, this is a little awkward. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I need to get a photo of one of my photo albums here. I should have done slides, I just did not have the time. Um, there we go. Uh, very history. Do we have anybody on the team It's all G-rated, don't worry. Um, I meant to help out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you. Oh, shit. Maybe I should take that seriously. I mean, if, if I were using my iPad, we would not have this problem. But if you look across the Hudson River, the large site outlined in purple uh, that says uh, NYCR, New York Central Railroad, that's the current Port Imperial site, which was, as I said, purchased by my family in 1981. Um, my father, who began his career in the trucking business and, and, and uh, did extremely well, uh, went into real estate, purchased this site. And having grown up in Hudson County, and being very familiar with the old railroad ferry system and having ridden the New York Central Railroad ferries as a boy, um, immediately saw the opportunity when this piece of land came on the market and purchased it and realized that in order to uh, realize the value of it, he would have to reinstitute ferry service to Manhattan. And that's what he did in 1986 and 1987. This is actually the 25th anniversary year of New York Waterway. Um, he purchased what I, I can't show you. It was an old railroad uh, lighterage pier at 38th Street on the west side of Manhattan. And it was because of those two pieces of private property uh, New York Waterway got started. Because uh, if anybody went to law school and remembers Gibbons versus Ogden, um, neither state can regulate interstate ferry service. We actually had to invoke Gibbons versus Ogden in a lawsuit against New York City in 1984 because the Koch administration at the time thought that this was just a real estate play to draw business out of Manhattan. And they actually sued to block it. Well, <laughs> Now, uh, things have turned around 180 degrees, and everyone recognizes the enormous value of ferry service uh, for economic development. So, uh, the Port Imperial site, um, let me see, I'm gonna screw it up again. Do I just uh, click on it, or I can't try to zoom in? Well, let me take, let me take you quickly through the slides. This is, um, this is Port Imperial in 1935. Uh, you can see the intense railroad use uh, of the site. All of those trains you see in the foreground are commuter trains from Bergen, Passaic County, Rockland County, uh, as far west as Sussex County. They are also long distance trains. Uh, you could board a ferry in Manhattan, connect to a train in Weehawken, and go all the way to Albany, Chicago, uh, or points south. So it was a major intermodal hub for over 100 years. Uh, and a lot of, of course, the, the passenger rail service is gone, but that's been replaced now by light rail, bus, park ride, and other intermodal connections to the water. Uh, here's another view of it. Um, here's a couple of other aerial views showing the intense industrial uses at Port Imperial. Uh, there's a ferry departing in the, in the bottom slide. Uh, these ferries were enormous. They were very similar to the current Staten Island ferries. They cur carry cars and trucks. Uh, they could carry up to 2,000 passengers. They move very slowly. Very, very different from the ferries we operate today, which do not take cars. Um, they take bicycles, and I've already been criticized for charging a dollar a bike. Sorry about that. Uh, but they do take up space. Um, here's an interesting slide. This is an intermodal connection. This uh, uh, is a trolley that is going down from the top of, uh, of, um, of Boulevard East, down the uh, uh, Palisades towards the Weehawken Ferry. Uh, this was taken in 1945. So you see the intermodal connections 
um, which really existed. Here's another view of Port Imperial uh, showing the view to the north with the Pershing Road Bridge and another trolley uh, right in the middle of the bridge there. Uh, the ferry was connected very heavily with heavy rail, light rail, and bus. And uh, essentially, we have put that system back in place now in Port Imperial. Um, so real estate and intermodal transportation on the waterfront has been uh, an essential uh, aspect of the New York Harbor for over 100 years. This was our old ferry terminal, which my father purchased. It, it itself was an old ferry boat called the Jamestown. It used to actually run on the Hudson River, then was sold to um, uh, to uh, a company in Rhode Island, and it operated between Jamestown and Newport, Rhode Island, until the uh, opening of the Narragansett Bay Bridge in 1969, and it became surplus, and my father purchased it, and turned it into a floating ferry terminal uh, for Port Imperial, and this is where New York Waterway was born. Um, let's see. Uh, that's the fate of most of the other railroad ferries. Um, you can see this one was called the Elmira. It also ran on the, um, uh, from Weehawken. Uh, it was abandoned in the early 1960s and it was floated to Edison, New Jersey, where it sank and it was later scrapped. So that, that's what happened to the old railroad ferry system. Here in, again, this was a ferry that ran from the town of Edgewater uh, across uh, the river to 125th Street, where passengers would connect, uh, would walk actually to the IRT subway at 125th Street and transfer. So you see the whole intermodal nature of trans Hudson uh, transportation goes way, way back in history. And just as a personal aside, my mother, who grew up in Edgewater, uh, as a young woman, took this ferry to work. She worked in Lower Manhattan, and she uh, took the ferry, she took a trolley to, to the Edgewater Ferry Plaza, took the ferry to 125th Street, took the subway to work down on Wall Street as a secretary. And just this gives you a sense of the scale of the ferry terminals on the Manhattan side. This is down at Barclay Street. This is the old Erie Lackawanna Ferry Terminal at Barclay Street, taken in 1953. Of course, it's all gone, and the piers now have been incorporated into the current Hudson River Park. But again, just as all the private railroads on the west shore of the Hudson had their own ferry boats and ferry terminals, so too did they also have to have ferry terminals on the eastern side in Manhattan. Of course, that real estate is extremely expensive, uh, and with the containerization of freight and the rise of the bus and the car, all of this disappeared and, and uh, collapsed in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Let me just switch gears a bit, then I'll shut up. Um, let me go, um, I have to get another album here. I just want to uh, show you some of, the, uh, some of the current views of Port Imperial. Um, here we go. Uh, this one. Here is, this is an album of other, and if you're interested in this, you can, um, I'm a big Facebook person, uh, you can uh, friend the New York Waterway page and uh, follow what happens happening in New York Waterway. This is the new Port Imperial Ferry Terminal at Weehawken, uh, from, taken from Boulevard East. Uh, this was my project, it took me six, nine years to build in tandem with the 39th Street Terminal uh, in Manhattan, uh, working with uh, different uh, levels of government in different states and of course, in New York City, I mean, in New York, you have two sovereigns. You have the city and the state, so that was a real tooth puller. Um, but we got it done because people early on recognized the importance of investing in uh, ferry infrastructure. And um, I think Jordan Grusin from Grusin Sampton is in the audience, and uh, he designed this terminal. It's an award-winning design, and I uh, had a great uh, deal of fun working with Jordan and his team, and we came up with a truly spectacular building that is now really uh, the western anchor of a new bridge across the Hudson River, and is going to be filled, uh, or going to be served increasingly by, uh, here's another black and white view of it. Uh, here's a uh, profile shot from the Esplanade in Weehawken. Um, another view at night. Uh, again, another view from uh, the south, looking north. Uh, yet another view. And here's the waiting room, that's the second story where I have my offices, where the corporate offices are located, looking down on the passenger waiting area. It's a wonderful building, um, and it's a pleasure to work in. This is the southern view of Port Imperial at the moment, talking about real estate development. These are, the, these are vacant surface parking lots, uh, which will be developed according to a uh, master plan uh, that uh, was approved by Weehawken a long time ago. We are partners with Roseland Properties. 
uh, from New Jersey and with Lennar and uh, with KHAV and, and, and um, uh, we have varying projects going on and uh, it's been a 15 year effort and we still have probably about 10 more years left to fully develop the site. Um, here you see a view of the terminal from the north and the structure in the foreground is a new 850 car parking garage that we are currently constructing with our partners at Roseland and the town of Weedhawken. Um, it will replace the surface lots so that then they, they can be developed for their highest and best use, which is residential and uh, commercial. Uh, the garage should open in late October, early November of this year, and will be a major, major uh, boon to the ferry service as well, obviously, as to the Port Imperial project. Um, let's see. Uh, just uh, for uh, completion, this is the 39th Street Terminal. Uh, many of you have maybe been there already. Uh, this also was uh, my project. It uh, was a former, uh, our former bus garage. It was just a corrugated metal shed. Uh, and is now uh, a $55 million uh, union terminal and uh, has six slips, uh, several uh, thousand feet of retail and uh, uh, waiting room for at least 1,800 passengers. And uh, this is the busiest terminal in the waterway system. It's the uh, third busiest terminal in New York Harbor after the two Staten Island terminals, and it's, um, it's uh, something I'm very proud of. There's another view of it with the kayaker, uh, right before we ran him over. Um, so we'll talk about uh, sharing the waterways. I, that's a topic for a different panel. Uh, view of the barges at uh, Pier 79. There again, there's the entrance pavilion, the northern entrance pavilion with one of our buses. It's important to mention that the system is really an intermodal ferry bus system. Everyone thinks of ferries as just boats running from point to point. New York Waterway is really not that. It's really an intermodal ferry bus mass transit system with, very, with regional reach. Uh, we run from Orange County, New York, all the way south to Monmouth County, New Jersey, a service area of over 100 miles. And we move over uh, 30,000 passengers a day uh, via 33 boats and a number of, uh, of terminals throughout the harbor. But, the West Side Terminal and Port Imperial are the two largest. They are our flagship terminals. Another view of the Southern Entrance Pavilion with a banner which shows the New York Waterway Rescue of US Air, the U.S. Air Flight that crashed in the Hudson, the Miracle on the Hudson in January of 2009. Uh, our vessels, I'm proud to say, rescued 143 of the 156 passengers uh, who very likely would have, um, would have drowned uh, in the 38 degree water. Uh, if they had not been, uh, if, the, if the plane had not crashed right in front of our terminal, uh, right at the beginning of rush hour. So God was looking down on all of us that day. Uh, now that, this gets into Hoboken. I won't, uh, won't go into Hoboken, but, but uh, these photos are available. If, uh, if you're a Facebook person, you can be my friend, and you can see them yourself, or you can uh, friend the uh, Facebook page of New York Waterway, which I would recommend. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up with that. You see, um, that New York Waterway Ferries began as a piece of infrastructure for a major real estate project and then went on to become a viable operating business in their own right and have now gone on to really run uh, pretty much all of the Trans-Hudson Ferry service between New York and New Jersey. And uh, uh, with the uh, demise of the Arc Tunnel, I'm sure many of you know about the Arc Tunnel, uh, the new rail tunnel under the Hudson, uh, the only way for the state of New Jersey to increase mass transit capacity across the river is to do what the old railroad ferries did uh, for about 100 years from the end of the Civil War to uh, the 1950s, which was to uh, provide very, very substantial intermodal connections with cross light rail, uh, park ride, bicycles, pogo sticks, skateboards, whatever. Just get to the waterfront, get on a boat, and we'll do the rest. So that's it. Thank All right. you.